Oh my goodness, I love this damn album. Oh, don't you love uh, it when good music comes out? Damn it! <laughs> Welcome back to TKIF and Kemp. It's Friday here on KempiRadio.com. You just heard her one, this is her new single, and I'm so excited. She hasn't been here in over a year, and I know all of her fans have been waiting. When are you going to be back on Kempi Radio? When are you going to be back on Kempi Radio? And finally, the just the the best person I've one of the best people I've interviewed here on Kempire Radio. We have a, a forty five minute interview um, that we did like uh, I think it was like March of last year before she had this hit singles out before Can I get a riff? Yeah, before all of that, <laughs> she was here on Kempire Radio. She actually actually sang that song for the very first time here on the show. Hopefully, she'll sing a little something for us tonight. Please welcome my girl Elvarna to the show. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> what up? L, oh my goodness, first of all, it feels like uh, you, you finally have come home. I know, it's crazy, it's been too long. Way too long. L, first of all, if you guys just tuned in to TKIF, L Varner is finally here. Her new album, Perfectly Imperfect, is out. Rave yes. reviews. Uh, first of all, L, let me say, because you know I'm a music snob and... I, I, was, I was just really thrown at how well put together this album is from the vocals to the lyrics to the production. Everything is flawless. flawless. Thank you so much. I'm so impressed. First of all, you saw when I tweeted, and I was like, first of all, I see El, El Varner's name everywhere on this album booklet. <laughs> yeah. Um, how, much yes. creative, how much creative control did they give you? Um, Full creative control. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I worked. I, I, I'm very, um, inclusive in my work. So, you know, from the producers to my label, to my management, everyone was involved in the decision making. There were certain, uh, things that were pushed for that, that I said, you know, I'll, I'll give a little, you know, I'll give a little on this thing. I'll give a little on that. But everybody was totally open and supportive that I was going to make this amazing album. And thank God, and, and it, it really turned out to be something I couldn't be more proud of. I know you've, heard you know? This, I've heard, I know you've gotten this question because you've been on the, the, uh, the media promo and all of that great stuff, and everyone's mm -hmm. asking, why did you name your album Perfectly Imperfect? Why did you name your al album Perfectly Imperfect? Can you tell us the truth? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, I'll give you an example, right? I'll give you two examples. You know how I Don't Care starts with a, how the beat skips and it repeats? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know how Soundproof Room also starts with that dun, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, well... When I had, when I was recording, um, I asked the engineer. I said, "Can you uh, can you make a, a, a almost like instead of having a click, can you just repeat the first half second of the of the track because both of the tracks started right when the verse dropped, so I would never be able to like sing on, on the right part. So mm -hmm. those were supposed to be like placeholders just for me to sing my my verse, mm -hmm. but it ended up staying as part of the record." And um, that's an example of things on the record that were not perfect and that were not necessarily how I planned them to be. But after, after you know, working on this album and, and putting so much into it, I came to a place where I said, this is it. It is perfectly imperfect. I'm not going to go and fix every note. I'm not going to fix every flat or every, you know, hiccup or breath or anything. And I'm just going to let this be what it is. It's, it's, it's a, a beautiful album. And it also, it also applied to where I was at in my life, having to accept myself the way I am. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I wrote So Fly and, and I came to a huge, I broke through a huge confidence barrier when I wrote that song. Mm -hmm. I still, on a daily basis, struggle with self-acceptance, you know? Mm -hmm. How do you motivate yourself? How, you know, how, how did you, because you know you wrote So Fly, but you said you still had a lot to, you know, come through. How, did, how, did, how does Elle motivate herself to do that? Because you're out on the public forum. Everyone's looking yeah. at you. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I do is I just try to keep my, I try to keep myself so grounded and remember that even though the, to the public, I'm, you know, some would say a celebrity or, or coming into celebrity or becoming famous, I'm still 
a regular girl like everybody else. Mm. Well, everybody's not a girl, but you know, I'm a regular person. I'm not and to I say <laughs> everyone's a girl. No. <laughs> but uh, I'm still a regular person, and I I try not to ever let any of those things get to my head because they're really not real at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, all those things can be gone in an instant, and then what would be left is me, and that's how it's always got to be. Um, or or I'll be lost, and, and that would be really sad. I, I hope that never happens. You know, the, 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 the first time you ever came here on Kempai Radio over a year ago, you didn't have mm-hmm. a single out. Um, but, you know, let's talk about the beginning. You know, before the, the album came out and everything like that, you released your first single and then you released your second single, Refill, which became a huge, huge, huge success. Can we first of all talk about when was the first time you heard your song on the radio? And, and where <laughs> were you? Um, I was in Brooklyn and I was driving. And all of a sudden, I don't remember if it was Hot 97 or Power 105, forgive me, mm-hmm. but it came on the radio, and he brought it back, So he brought the beginning of Only Want to Give It to You so many times mm-hmm. that I almost didn't know what song it was, because <laughs> it has such a familiar vibe, that mm-hmm. track, you know, and when my vocal came on, I just was like, I was floored, I started shaking, I started like, I'm, I went blank and I had to pull over because it was just too overwhelming. I broke down crying. I was just like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> and it was, it was a beautiful moment I'll never forget. And then Refill became this huge hit. What, yeah. was, what, what was that like for you? Because I remember when you sang, I remember clearly when you sang that song on the show and you're like, Oh, this is the song that you know we're putting together and blah 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 and then for it to be be what it what it is yeah i i always knew that riso was a hit song mm. i knew that a lot of people were not going to like it necessarily or not understand it maybe because of the fiddle oh. i knew that it was risky but i knew that it was the right risk that it was necessary to say i'm i'm different mm-hmm. i'm not so different that you can't remotely understand, but I'm different enough to take a risk in my music. And I think a lot of people, the song grew on them. Mm-hmm. A lot of people instantly were like, oh my God, this is amazing. And mm-hmm. some people still don't like it and that's okay, but I I just knew that was the song. That was going to be the breakout song. And it was, and it was. And now yeah. your next single, I Don't Care, we just played it here on the show. Yes. Can we expect a video and what can we expect from this video? Absolutely. And the video, I'll, okay. The video is the first um, uh, time that I'm actually, I'm, I'm making a very strong statement in the video about different kinds of love, different versions of love, different people, different couples and scenarios mm-hmm. that are so in love and, and they're kind of, maybe against a certain odd because of their circumstance, you know, maybe it's not the typical couple, maybe it's a, without giving too much away, you see where I'm going with it, yeah. but people that are just like, this is my, this is who I love and I do not care and I don't know what to tell you. So it's, it's a strong statement. Um, I'm, I'm playing with my look a little bit, nothing too extreme, but it's different. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's a beautiful video. It's coming together. It's in, in its editing process okay. and getting all the tweaks in. I want it to be amazing and get ready because it's coming soon. Okay. L Varna here on Kempire Radio's TKIF. We have a couple more questions, L, before we let you go. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the album. Let's talk about the artwork for the album because I mm. mentioned that as well. Because everything was consistent, and that's one thing I've noticed with a lot of artists, up and coming artists or established artists. Your branding is very consistent, like from the colors to the Thanks. design. Is that all L's mind and creativity, or is that just a, a team thing? It's a combination of both. Mm. I remember when I first, like, when we first got into the imaging conversation and like how I wanted my brand. You know what? 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 If people were to walk away with a sing- signature thing that's El Varner, what would it be? Mm. And I came up with a mood book and I had all these colors and all these uh, visions and, and uh, images 
And uh, one of the big things was definitely Warri Vice, my stylist. I remember the clothes that he brought to that album packaging shoot. At first, I was like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, these patterns don't match. And I was like, but this is so, like, but he pushed me to, he saw a whole concept, and I didn't necessarily see it at first. And mm -hmm. looking back, I really created a look that I'm seeing now more and more and more, like, all these things that, that were something that we really came together and thought about, but it all comes from my initial thing is I want to represent myself and express the things that I like and I would do. Because mm -hmm. when I'm not comfortable and I don't feel natural, I, I'm very awkward. <laughs> like, I can't, I just can't do me and I'm not being me. I can't. So, um, it all works. What's the best part of this experience so far? But you're still early in your career, but a lot has happened. Very. A lot of people know 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 your name. What's been the best part so far? The best part so far is that I can say I can say that people know me for my music, and mm. that is all. Like mm. it's not because I had some. It's not because of any other thing that like wow, her music is amazing, and people say things about my look, and and that's. That's part of it as well, but the main thing is my music. I'm so proud to have, to have done that and be broken based off my music. Mm -hmm. Not because of a collab, not because of a co-sign, you know, yeah. just music. What's What's been the, I don't want to say the worst part, what's been the most challenging part with all of the, the exposure and success and everything like that? The challenging, I'd say the most challenging part is um, coming to terms with the fact that it is a 24-7 job. Mm. You know, you every time you step out of the house, you have to be that artist every time. And, and then you come to the realization that even when you go home to see your family, they want to take pictures. <laughs> people come, people start showing up, people's friends and cousins, it's like, I thought I was on vacation, oh. or I thought I was visiting family, but I guess I'm still working. That's mm. okay. <laughs> um, and it, it just becomes something that you get used to. I've definitely gotten used to, and I've started to understand where everyone else is coming from. They're just so excited, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I get it, so I embrace it. How do you find balance? I find balance by... It's like one of the questions I get most asked the most and I always have a hard time answering is like, what is y'all doing in her spare time? <laughs> and <laughs> and the, <laughs> Yeah, honestly, like nothing. I I am so I use up so much energy on the road, doing shows, doing interviews, making appearances mm -hmm. that any ch chance I get, I just want to chill out and veg out. I don't really want to go out. I don't want to hang i it's it's just i really have to conserve my energy so i can keep keep doing it at the level that i'm doing it mm -hmm. el varna is here so yes. excited i'm so excited that you came back here on the show i was like oh she got a new album she, she probably don't remember us <laughs> man i was thinking you wasn't gonna remember me man you got oprah i'm like man i don't know if i can compare <laughs> Well, Elle, you know so what? proud of you for that, oh, by the way. You. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited for you, Elle, because first of all, you know, when you came on the show, we didn't have any, you know, like, you know, anything from the album, at least, um, to, to go by besides your live performances and a couple of things that we heard. Um, and I'm so excited that what you put out was, you know, someone tweeted and they were like, I don't know if I like this Elle Varner album because she's so young, but it's such a grown sound. I was like... I would say grown people are the ones that buy albums. It's young people buy singles. And you bought, you created an album that people need to hear. And I, I'm so yeah. proud to have you here on the show and so excited for what's to come. So let us know what is coming up. A tour? Uh, we know that yes. the new video is coming. What's coming up? Keep us posted. Okay. So in September, I'm, I'm already doing dates like several times a week. Like all summer I did it. All the summer jams, yeah. a lot of promo. But now I'm actually starting to do my own shows. And I'm going on tour in September, nationwide. Um, I'm not sure if all the dates are officially up yet, but mm -hmm. they should be up next week. Um, I'm also going to Japan, Ooh. which I've been requested in Japan. And I, I don't want to say the other two countries yet because 
Um, Are they in Europe? I, no, they're not. Believe oh. it or not, they're not in Europe. Oh. But it's huge, and I I will let you be the first to know when I can officially announce. Yes. But I will be touring for the next for a minute. Let's just say that. Um, and in between that, I'm working on my second album. Wow. Um, Damn. Already, I've already been writing like throughout this whole process. I've just, I'm always writing, mm -hmm. and and I don't, I can't say I have the vision yet or the exact thing that I want to achieve mm -hmm. for the second album. But it's really just putting the songs together, and then I'll figure out how to tell the stories. And I'm really impressed with the way you told the stories on on. Um perfectly imperfect I, I, thank you just the fact that you you produced wrote and and sang and vocal, did all the vocal i was just like oh, yeah I'm, like, I'm, I'm reading because it's not it's unheard of in, nowadays that you've seen artists do all of all of what you did with that album um so congrats on that but before we let you go we play some games with our with our artists here on the show and we want you to finish this sentence okay 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 life is like a box of chocolate <laughs> 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 the world needs the world needs mm -hmm. love I believe in love mm. love is life R&B music must continue to grow and progress I want to thank God and everyone who has supported me and helped me along the way. The person I most want to be proud of me is? My grandmother. Why is that? Elaborate on that one. Uh, my grandmother passed right when I got signed. Mm. And it's so strange because, like, if she was here today, she really wouldn't be, like, saved. she just was... So she cared and everything, and she always supported me, but I could always just talk to her and never talk about what I did. Mm -hmm. And um, I would have just liked to, for her to have seen it because she was a young musician, a piano player, a singer. She gave me my rest. Wow. She, uh, and for, it didn't work out for her. She ended up being a, a, a wife and a mother and, and doing that whole thing, but... I would love for her to see second generation for it to all come together. Mm -hmm. I am ready to forgive. Anyone and everything. Mm -hmm. I want my legacy to be. Timeless. What makes L. Varner mad? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um... Stupid little things. <laughs> <laughs> what makes El Varna insecure? Um, makes me insecure. Um, just uh, I get I guess body image. Mm -hmm. What what virtue means the most to El Varna? Integrity. Mm, you and me both, L. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get an amen on that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. L, before you so, go, you know, you know the chat room is buzzing. Everybody wants you to sing a little something. You you sang exclusively before refill. Sing something else. Yeah. For us. Sing something else. All right. All right. Um <laughs> me, me, me. Uh -huh. okay. I'm going and I'm going. Into the deep end, forever now. It's the one thing I'm going and it shall be all over my skin. Everyone knows God and He shows that I don't care. Yes, El Barna here on Good Fire Radio. It's TKIF. El, you know, a couple of other things before you let you go. I saw you performed a Brandy song at your recent show yes. in New York City. Why did you choose I Want to Be Down to perform? It Sometimes when I'm singing songs, I'll hear another song that can fit into that musical mm -hmm. bed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And it's just, I loved Brandy. Like, Brandy's albums were the soundtrack to my life, oh. to my high school, to my middle school. Like, oh my God, Brandy is everything. Those vocals, those songs. And to, you know, I, I never really thought about it, but it just popped in my head and I said, I must do this. Mm. And she's the sweetest person. I met her in Philly. She's so awesome. I love her so much. And Elle, you, of course, every night we have a question of the night. So I want to pose this question to you. What, okay. What would you do if you weren't afraid you would fail? Mm. What would I do if I wasn't afraid I would fail? Mm-hmm. Mm. Dang, that's a deep <laughs> question. We're a what deep would show. I do? We don't just talk yeah. about reality TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would I do if I wasn't afraid I would fail? Okay, I I, I would have to say I'm actually living that because mm. I'll, I'll share something with you. One of my biggest fears in life always used to be success. Wow. And when I looked into that, I realized it's not so much I'm afraid of success, but it's like if I play small, I can always say, well, you know, didn't work out. I tried, but... When you play big and you give it your all and there's a chance that it doesn't work out, that is the most terrifying thought in life. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes most of us just play at a certain level. You might win, you might lose, but you didn't put out much. And for me to get where I am right now and to keep getting higher and higher to where I want to be, I put so much on the line and I play at the highest level because, the results that I want in return are going to have to have that much, take that much risk and go that hard and, and just give that much. Wow. So I'm, I'm kind of living it. Amen. El Varna, thank you so much for being here on the show. And you have to thank come back. Thank you. Congrats I on will. Everything. I cannot wait. Congrats on everything. Everyone, please support R&B. Go right now to iTunes or Amazon. Get your copy of El Varna's new album, Perfectly Imperfect, available yeah. everywhere. It's doing extremely well. El, first of all, shout out to you for doing so well without, you know, all the shows are on hiatus until September. Uh, you yeah. Really, you don't have a lot of pro um, promo, and it did so well on its own. So congrats I to know. you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, everybody who has supported. I love you. All my fans, all the radio people, everyone, the label, management, and just the, the, the everyday people that have supported. Thank you. And we'll see you at the Grammys, Miss L. We're going to play your song, Oh, What a Night. All right. Have fun. It's Friday. <laughs> and be safe. Most definitely. Come on, drink and drive. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> L. All right. Here TKF. Thanks, L. Here's Oh, Bye. What a Night, y'all.